Ne znam, to da. Good afternoon guys, uh, myself Nivin, I'm from Panda Key Learning. So I'm, I'm working in Embedded System Department here. Uh, so today I'll be leading the, I'll be taking the session today one hour. So this will be a in introductory section into session into Internet of Things and Industry 4.0. So we'll uh, uh, mostly we'll I'll talk about uh, Internet of Things. So industry when it comes to Industry 4.0. There are like many different technologies that are involved in it, like uh, AR, VR, uh, uh, Internet of Things, so <coughs> autonomous vehicles. Uh, so there's so many things are involved in the same thing. So here we'll just talk about Internet of Things, and uh, so here I'm working in Embedded System Department. So that is, uh, we can actually use Internet of Things in so many various. Uh, uh, Various uh, uh, you know uh, technologies in in cases like it like for example internet and uh, computing itself can be used in so many different areas like uh, medical science or education or different type of industries so same as that internet of things can can be used in so many different areas like in case of autonomous car for example uh, so if you take a uh, uh, like cars like Tesla car they have a uh, they are always connected to the uh, connected to the main server they are all, always connected to the internet the car itself is able to download the download different software packages and they they'll make uh, the car car itself will make without the owner knowing the car itself will make different type of up updates so this is like one of the uh, we can say this as internet of things and you'll understand why as we go through the whole thing so in basic sense internet of thing means like uh, so internet of humans first of all we can initially uh, we have there is always a human uh, using the internet access the internet through some device and use it uh, for for some purpose so now we are automating the whole uh, there are like automation is done in so many different levels levels of, uh, of industry and other other places so this uh, Internet of Things is comes up, comes to uh, emerges as a result of that type of automation. That means basically it means like a thing. A thing means uh, any object. Like it could be an automobile, like a automobile, like I said, just a car or a truck. That is an autonomous driving vehicle. Or uh, even if it is not autonomous, still there are uh, systems uh, you know that can utilize internet. So then uh, there are other objects like a house or an or an appliance in 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 the house or <coughs> different different various things can be connected to the internet so without a human involving the thing itself is able to access the internet and do some operations so this this is a basic idea of internet of things so before going into internet of things itself uh, first we'll go through revolution of internet <coughs> itself so uh, here this is a pictorial representation of different eras when it comes to internet. So internet has been in existence for uh, decades now. So but it is its popular form is uh, only been in uh, use for like uh, two decades or a little more than two, you know, you know two decades. But uh, but the in internet itself internet itself the idea the uh, actual implementation of in the original implementation of internet itself has been in uh, <coughs> has been existing for uh, like decades so it started in 1969 so the first we can divide the uh, internet up to internet era up to right now uh, used by like uh, internet of boffins, internet of geeks, internet of masses, mobile in internet, in internet of things. So into different different eras. So here the first era is internet of boffins. So before start uh, talking about the uh, that we'll talk about, we'll see what is what what the word boffins means. So, so boffins means basically uh, any researcher, any person who's uh, 
doing some research in some institute that uh, that type of academic people are generally called boffins so internet of boffins is uh, is the era when internet was only exclusively available for these people so like it all started in us uh, so in uh, us defense department they wanted to interconnect all the prestigious institutes research institutes like you if you know about the uh, big universities in 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 us you may know about uh, ivy league schools so these are like uh, prestigious universities uh, like harvard stanford or caltech or mit these are like these institutes are very uh, high high level institutes and they have the industry based research programs so the most of these research programs are funded by government so if you if there is like uh, if you take any country in this world any functioning country in this world with a um, uh, with a good uh, you know defense department and uh, uh, ministry like that they they'll always they'll be the high, uh, the the uh, first investor they they'll be there'll be the biggest in investor in any kind of scientific research program so the country will be mostly uh, the government and the country will be nation will be uh, you know putting so much money into this uh, you know different type of research programs so it is a uh, because it is essential for the future growth of the country so is, is it it could be like a sci- uh, like a military type of defense or it could be medicinal uh or it could be for other purposes um, so it could be any area but it mostly the country the government itself is the biggest investor when it comes to research so all these uh they all these places have um all these places are, are like all these institutes have researchers Uh, who are doing research for the government so they wanted to make it more efficient so like uh, if the uh, for example uh, in two institutes two uh, you know universities they are doing the same similar type of research on the same same subject and uh, there are like 10 people working there and 10 people working here so if they don't have any connection between each other they not uh, able to com- communicate with each other in real time then it is hard to uh, convey whatever result they have and if it is if they are not able to do that then the researchers will be going independently and that will take more time if they can combine both uh, both the universities and they can do research parallelly through communication through this, this type of real communication real time communication then they they are able to in, uh, make it more efficient so that was the original idea of uh, internet to interconnect all these institutes so uh, so the uh, so they are able to communicate easily so the that internet was called arpa arpanet so arpa is a research and development wing of uh, defense uh, so that is defense part us defense defense department so that uh, that was an exclusive network uh, only the only certain designated people were able to access the uh, access the network uh so so initially that that's why it was called arpanet so it uh that was the era of internet of boffins so it uh it uh this went on for like a long time before uh people other people were able to access that network so <coughs> so if you take internet it is basically it is just a uh interconnectivity interconnection of small smaller network so if we take a university there there will be a LAN, local area network and that network will interconnect all the different machines in that uh, in that campus and then again that whole network will be connected to another switch so that that way uh, these different institutes were interconnected so that was called arpanet at, at that time and then after like 95 even before even the early 90s uh, some people were able to access even the even they were not part of these institutes still they were able to access access the internet um access the access is you know in a network but they were also like academics who were interested in these research programs and then after 95 uh, internet um, was made public so people were able to use internet they were able to connect uh, to the main network 
so they can create their own local networks and they can connect to the main network they were able to use uh, in another they can <coughs> so but still it wasn't that popular because uh, at that time it wasn't that useful like most people don't really care about the the depth uh, in depth technology what 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 is happening uh, and all those things so they want something convenient they want to use something and they want uh, they want it to be useful so that is the only thing they care about most most people care about but some people are li- really enthusiastic who are interested in the technology and see to see what what is happening behind uh, so they were the only people who were really in, interested in connecting to internet because otherwise it wasn't that much useful you know today we if we if we see we have like almost so almost everything is done through internet on a government level or a private level whatever it is like you want to take a, uh, get an art Uh, you know admission in some government college or some other private college you can apply through their websites there there are like so many different uh, uh things that we can do these days but in the early times it was not it was not possible because uh, the internet was slower and the, the number of devices connected was very less because the pc was uh, so expensive uh, so if, all the people cannot buy a pc and uh, get a connection connections are were also expensive uh, to use the internet so it was not that popular because it it was not easy to access the internet and also there was it wasn't that useful there was uh, there wasn't that many um, uh, like websites and platforms so it wasn't useful so only uh, so that's why it's called the internet of geeks that's why it's called in in and that era is called internet of geeks why because it is uh, only these enthusiast people people who really interested in these technologies and things they, they were the only people who were uh, connecting to internet uh, so then but still uh, major companies like amazon already uh, started their uh, you know business in internet they started with the delivering books uh, books through the internet so that was like one of the biggest examples so then after that late 90s early 2000s that is the uh, big it boom that we all know about the it boom and uh, like if we take india uh, how bangalore became a very uh, uh, you know industrial and it hub so after the it boom and the company like infosys that is one of the world's leading it companies and uh, that was established during this time so all the like i uh, all the uh, internet re- you know related companies stocks went so uh, when high the prices went high uh, computer related or internet related pe- uh, like uh, company stocks prices went when when high because that was the it boom era where after that uh, the in- internet became more popular so that era is called internet of masses so in and out of masses means like people more people were able to more uh, like companies like amazon were uh, <coughs> have started different type of services internet based services so there are like so many companies who started that type of same, similar kind of uh, services and uh, institutes and in, uh, you know companies they started their own websites so this type of things in, uh, increase the number of people using in internet so that is the era called internet of masses also the easy easy uh, like compared to the 90s uh, uh, the machines that uh, in, uh, the systems became more uh, affordable but still it wasn't that popular because still it, it didn't have the current popularity because still people had to use uh, uh, pcs computers personal computers to connect to in internet to access internet but this wasn't affordable to most people so that was the era of uh, internet cafes so that uh, in 2007 so before before 2007 people mostly uh, use internet through in even even if they have a uh, pc at their home still they desktop at their home still they uh may not have a internet connection because it is slower and also if you want high speed internet then it will be very expensive so because of that mostly people use you uh you used to go to in internet cafes for different purposes and still from 2007 itself uh, you can see there are like so many like central government and state governments started internet uh, like you can apply for different um, uh, like colleges or if, if you want to 
go uh, 11th or 12th different type of things where they have started uh, like online applications were available so people were able to uh, like upsc started this type of uh, online application uh, you know portals so that uh, that have put things made internet more popular but still people were accessing it through their personal computer they were mostly going to internet cafes to access it so this internet cafe is very popular in in, in that uh, time period and up to like 2009 2008 2009 period it was popular then afterwards with the emergence of uh, mobile in, in internet it became more popular so mobile internet like in the uh, like the mobile phones the gprs phones uh, at that time was uh, was in capable of like the phones before the current smartphones or the uh, the windows phones the symbian phones and uh, the phones before that small phones that are able to access the internet through the sim card before all that uh, you know before 2g 1g and all that it was uh, people were not uh, it you can use mobile but you, you you won't be able to access the in internet through it so after 2000 the uh, the mobile devices through mobile devices you you uh, you are able to access the internet so at the beginning it was in that much it was in exactly same like a desktop environment it was uh, because the computing power was uh, low and the applications that we can run in that mobile devices were limited so that that's why that means you cannot access all the different things all the there are like uh, desktop versions for websites that may not be accessible through the mobile phone at that time then they improved it uh, it to uh, more efficient like became because of the uh, improvement in electronics because of improvement in different type of electronic devices uh, the mobile phones became more uh, more smarter and more <coughs> efficient and so they they were able to access the internet same as a normal desktop system normal desktop or a laptop system so that is a, that uh, from 2007 onwards that is called mobile internet the era of mobile internet so the advantage of mobile internet or mobile devices was that uh if the pc would cost so much but a mobile phone would cost cost much, much less than the pc and more people were connected to the in internet through the so the whole here the deciding factor of all these different eras which era in it, in, uh, in which year in you can see the number of devices connected or number of people who are able to access the internet here the number is very less and here the number is little more uh, but much more than the original number here and then here it is much more people are people are familiar with already here it, at this position at, at this point people most people in the world are not aware aware of the internet or uh, maybe they know it it exists but uh, they have heard about it but they haven't used it they don't know anything because they are not it is not easily accessible and then from 2000 onwards it is a uh, it is it became so much popular and it was easy it is easy uh, from then onwards it was easy to use in internet then 2007 uh, onwards the mobile with the mobile internet more people were able to access more people were able to buy because it is affordable compared to a pc it is affordable so more, more people were able to buy these uh, mobile phones and access uh, internet so the connected devices number of devices increased from here to here it has increased as drastically then from 2012 onwards the whole uh it is not just so in in this whole up to 2011 this if we take these uh different different eras in all these cases we know that or uh, the end user is always a human human so whether it is internet cafes or the pcs or the uh the research uh, uh people or whatever the end user is always a human and there is some application the human can use uh to read the data to get the data uh, so it is always a human interfacing with the internet so then beyond then the with the uh, the era of uh, auto automation like uh, automation already existed but it was more like a, on a higher level like big 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 industries or uh, big things were automated but uh, the automation became more popular after like uh, the second decade of uh, 2000s from 2010 like 
like there there are like so many different research going on right now in autonomous cars and things like things like ROS robotic operating system so it is an open source uh, uh you know tool that you can use to make your own autonomous different type of autonomous robots so it is an open source platform that means people like uh, common people are able to use that and they were able to easily develop uh, they can they can be able to easily develop easily develop their own applications so that means autom- automation became more pop- uh, more uh, popular so because of automation more devices has to be connected to internet even without human interfacing directly interfacing uh, more devices are connected through automation so that is the idea of internet of things the emergence of internet of things more devices connected and these devices are autonomous autonomous they can uh, do uh, use the internet on their own basically using the internet means data trans- transferring data it could be multimedia or any kind of data but transferring data so for different purposes so that is the reason why we uh, the internet of things exist so these are like different eras through which the internet traveled and why we ha- uh, we are at this point of internet of things so why internet uh, so like obvious reasons anytime anywhere any person so anytime anywhere like uh, uh, still not fully true because there are like so many places that are not accessible uh, so many places cannot uh, from so many places we cannot access internet but it is mostly because we use a wired connection wired system right now for internet so cable based uh, uh, optical fiber cable based systems it is all wired right now the internet connection systems uh, like the international uh, cables like uh, there is like a whole in- industry that is working on on it right now like regularly they they are checking whether the under underwater cables the ocean uh, cables that uh, that that laid from one continent to other continent to interconnect these uh, like different countries to make internet possible so these are all through wired communications uh, so that is one limitation why because of, uh, because of that there are like some places are still not accessible but mm, but uh, uh, but technology like starlink can make it more accessible from so many different places like it is starling still starling is not all, all available in you know most places but if it is available you can access it without like uh, through a uh, directly through uh, satellite internet you can access in in a directly through satellite internet then this is like a uh, different features and uh, features of internet so like no one owns it there is no formal management or, or, or organization for internet as it was originally developed by the department of defense this lack of centralization made it less vulnerable to war time or terrorist attack so whenever whenever the uh, whenever a system is a decentralized it is not centralized then it is hard to attack the system because you can hard attack one part still the remaining parts will work so that is a, a there is a very good thing about internet because it is not centralized it's not controlled from one single place you cannot hit a single place and the whole internet will go uh, you know go off that is not possible so because it is decentralized then to access the internet an existing network need to pay a small registration fee and agree to certain standards like tcp ip uh, then the person who coined the term uh, internet of things uh, is Kevin Ashton in 1999 So what is internet of things like this is a brief definition of internet of things it's the same thing that i just uh, explained uh, from the start like internet of things is the network of physical objects devices vehicles buildings and uh, other items embedded with electronics software sensors and network connectivity that enables these objects to collect and exchange data so here the physical objects can be anything like vehicles buildings or appliances anything but if you take a vehicle it is not a it it won't it, it cannot access the internet on its own it's a me- mechanical machine so you, you need to embed the uh, embed the uh, vehicle with some electronics 
and this and then softwares to access the internet so you need a uh, some chip some soc to access the uh, to access the internet and then you can write programs to automate the whole thing and then you can there, there will be like if you take safety systems like different uh, collision detection uh, <clears throat> like different type of any kind of uh, malfunctioning like uh, any kind of engine malfunction all these can be detected and uh, uh, leakage so these all these in, these things can be detected through different type of sensors the sensors can be connected to a central system which in turn predict different type of uh, problems so this we can make it more smarter and uh, in we can make it totally autonomous like before the car, car breaks down some people will be alerted the car is going to break down and this is the location of the car that type of systems can be implemented easily implemented through internet of things and this type of smart devices so then the network connectivity is uh, that is one limitation of uh, in a net of things if you are not able to access network then there is no use in the the systems are obsolete they don't have any use so in in a single sentence uh, any time anywhere so they like uh, in a net of things so machine to machine communication is a very uh, like major uh, place a very Uh, plays a major role in case of internet of things like i explained that uh, the whole era of internet of things emerged because of the machine to machine communication that it was possible like the automation of things and uh, things be, being able to communicate with each other without any human help so that is the basic idea of uh, internet of uh, that was the uh, one of the main reasons of emergence of uh, in emergence of uh, internet of things machine to machine communication and everywhere uh, like on your campus we can have it like in you can implement the like a, at the at the beginning i said about talked about we talked about internet and it being used in so many different areas of life same as that internet of things can be used in so many places so one example is on your campus how can you implement internet of thing in in a in in a campus so this campus campus can be a university or a industrial or uh, or it campus so it can could be it park so it could be any one of these examples and there are like endless possibilities we can uh, use internet of things in so many different cases so these are like some of the examples here so wearable uh, for athletes and at- attendance tracking and complete coverage with high performance so there should be a wifi network and the i beacons digital ca- classroom whiteboards and displays uh, so personalized learning with adaptive e textbooks video records for uh, lecture capture and in the international collaboration and social exchange online testing student devices e textbooks notebooks tablets smartphones and uh, uh, like sensor track buses and verify student passengers so whether to so this may not be that much useful for higher standard students but uh, if you take like primary or lower primary uh, uh, like uh, children up to 10th or 10 or 9 uh, years old parents can easily track if there is a system like this parents can easily track the student after the school is done they can make sure that uh, the mm, child is in, inside the bus and the bus is at this position right now so that type of sa- safety systems can be easily implemented if you have internet of things implemented in your campus and then surveillance and security systems so different different like it's, uh, sensors in parking lot and driveways so like these are like some of the examples we can have uh, like there are like endless possibilities when it comes to any application whether it is a campus or a home a smart home uh, or a industry so whatever it is there are like endless possibilities then connected devices so this is the thing that we uh, discussed at the beginning the different different eras different different eras of internet and how it changed and became how internet of things came to existence so this is like this is like a diagrammatic representation of world population 
and connected devices devices number of devices connected to in the internet at that particular time period so in 2003 and here below you can see the ratio between population uh, between population uh, between connected devices and uh, population so here you can see 2003 the number of devices connected to internet is 500 million 500 million devices are connected to internet and then popular uh, world population was 6.3 billion so the ratio is 0 .0 0.0 0 0.08 so uh, like the number of devices connected is much less than the the overall population world population so this is the ratio here then after just seven years you can see the increase in number of devices became increased to 12.5 billion from half billion to 12.5 billion and the world population just increased 0.3 billion 0.5 billion so that is the it became uh, the the ratio uh, becomes 1.84 that means almost for every single person there is like almost two devices connected to internet for every two person people uh, every two pe uh, people there are like uh, two devices connected to internet so this is actually uh, from uh, from this you can see that uh, it is uh, in from a practical point of view this is the like all the people are not using internet or they they are not able to access in 2010 that is not the case i don't know even if it, even like 50% uh, of the or 70% 70, 70 of the population or even like 60 to 70 maybe like 60 to 70 percent of the population like well population were able to access internet i think it it could be like less than you know 60 50 percent or less than 50 even even less than 50 were people able to access the internet so only half less than half is only using the internet but still that connected devices is more uh, uh, you know uh, almost twice as uh, big as the world population so so that means that they all the people if all the people are not using then the only way to connect use all these uh, only way to these uh, you know use all these devices is automation so then after in for just five years that uh, the number of devices grew to 25 billion and then again in five years it grew to 50 billion in 2020 50 billion devices are connected and the world population is only 7.6 so here you can see the ratio is 6.58 okay so almost six and a half devices are connected for every person every single person so that means it is not practical the that all the people can use the in the internet uh, so that means it is most of the devices that that are connected to internet right now uh, uh, at this stage is automated So hype cycle of different uh, different technologies and Internet of Things. So then this is a layered representation of Internet of Things, different different layers of uh, when you take any in, in an IoT system, uh, different layers of it. Like uh, so, we've been talking about Internet of Things and uh, things by being able to do the do the operation on, on their own being able to access internet and do different things on their own so that is the that was the basic idea of that there is a basic idea of internet of things but still the end user is always a person the end user means the end benefic beneficiary it could be uh, directly a person might be using that uh, that service or it might be indirectly useful for people so end user is always uh, person so e even if you take any kind of technology that we develop any kind of research that is going on right now in in this world without uh, like uh, if you exclude some ex exceptions uh, apart from that most of the research right now going on is to make uh, human life more easier like it is always for uh, the end user is all end beneficiary is always people humans so the exceptions are like uh, for environmental based research so to uh, make the so that is also again uh, at the end even if you are making research to make the environment better 
still the end you end beneficiary is all uh, is human you with human the whole ecosystem will benefit but still the mostly will benefit will also benefit from that uh, from that also so so like if you take any kind of tech, uh, research or tech, technology development that is going on is always the person people are the end users and be, you know beneficiary so so the same as that at the higher level of uh, internet of things system people or and process so then after that so like uh, this is this can be a uh, process uh, can be any kind of uh, uh, like applications mobile application or a desktop application or it could be a uh, actual mechanical thing uh, you know uh, output so can be in any one of these things so it can be a process or a person then applications so different type of applications apps that build using thing thing data so then data analysis so this data analysis they uh, you know plays a major role right now in uh, like if we take uh, data science and uh, uh, you know machine learning deep learning this type of uh, fields right now they are actually they are uh, being used in so many you know so many areas of life like ai is being developed continuously and uh, for different type of you know research and uh, Uh, areas even in science research areas machine learning and uh, ai is used for different type of uh, simulate running different type of simulations and uh, getting different type of results it much more easier these days compared to the old times so that uh, machine learning ai plays a major role in this new era uh, <clears throat> so for example like i can say one example a very simple example like uh, uh, for example you have a uh, you need to the environmental case that we are talking about <clears throat> we need to see if the uh, the river a particular river that we need to analyze and we need to see if the river water is being polluted by the nearby industries so the how much the pollution is happening and how much content of different alien uh, you know the um, uh, elements are injected to the water how much it is affecting the how much it is affecting the uh, the whole you know ecosystem of the river uh, the flora and fauna fish life everything marine uh, like plants uh, fish life whatever it is how it is affecting it and also if people are using this water for different purposes and if they use it how it will affect them so if you want to find out what will be the long term effects of this you don't need to wait that much that long to uh, these days you don't need to wait that long to see that effect so you you can just these days like con- conventionally and also right now also like the surveys are done throughout a uh, time period so we'll take data well like a uh, time period of 6 months or one one year and uh, then you analyze the data and see uh, manually you analyze the data and see if there is any problems but uh, without that you can Ex- with the existing data and by continuously using sensors by reading this different contents like uh, dissolved oxygen content or turbidity ter- level of the water or different type of uh, other elements using you can using different sensors you can read these levels of this uh, uh, different elements and you can <coughs> you can then uh, so that there we can use a some kind of microcontroller system soc or some kind of microcontroller system to read the sensor data and then the device itself itself should be connected to a network and then the net uh, the from the device through the network it should be able to upload the data to a cloud so then from the cloud in cloud itself we can uh, automate the whole machine learning part you can just take that statistical data and you, you can feed it to a machine learning program and it will predict the pretty different type of outcomes or you can give it to multiple machine learning programs and it'll, so the, you can you can either do it manually by downloading the data and then using it in a system local system or you can automate it, it in the cloud itself like uh, aws if you take aws or uh, things speak this type of cloud services uh, uh, and even with the google cloud you can ac- uh, access the data and you can store the data in the cloud and you can use it for the or the whole thing can be automated through that type of cloud services 
so that that is one example in which a uh, internet of things can be used for uh, effectively predicting different type of outcomes there then uh, data ingestion so big data harvest storage of data uh, things so big data will we know that uh, what is the uh, relevance of big data these days like it is for uh, so one example is the is personalized ads that we get so based on the uh, search history and uh, different information that put uh, out there based on that the the uh, these uh, learning programs are able to predict what type of uh, ad the you know we should be seeing it it is based on that so it, it is useful for a person then global insta global infrastructure global infrastructure like pub, uh, public private and hybrid managed cloud infrastructure global infrastructure cloud different type of cloud in, you know infrastructures like uh, aws or google cloud different type of google cloud apis or uh, <coughs> things speak and uh, so there are like so many different cloud platforms are available these days so then connectivity and edge computing so communication protocols network mission to mission communication wifi telecom hardware kits everything comes under this part connectivity and edge computing so that is all different networks and protocols that are used for uh, used for connecting different devices and used for data transfer in this Uh, networks all comes under this and then things things are so these are like things are like layer one that is basic the most basic layer, layer where the where we implement the devices hardware devices like uh, sensors and controllers all these things so these are like different level uh, representation of layer you know layer representation of of a internet of iot system and then uh, different examples in home already seen that uh, campus example same way if you think about home you can uh, you, you have like endless possibilities to use uh, in a net of things how things can communicate so how things can communicate we can uh, like how we can automate these things so the, the one most im- important uh, thing is the sensors different type of sensors so to automate anything we need the that system need to have some kind of uh, need to have the awareness of the external external world like uh, the river example the sensors should be able to read the values physical parameters effectively so uh, so any sensor so this is like a definition of brief definition of what is a sensor a sensor is a device that measures a physical quantity and converts it into a signal which can be read, read by a, an observer or by an instrument so any sensor you take uh, so all different sensors have different different mechanisms so they all depend on different type of principles and mechanisms uh, so then through through that mechanism the physical parameter is measured and uh, uh, so it is not directly converted to uh, uh, you know the physical cannot be measured directly you have to first measure it through some mechanism and as a result of this mechanism some signal uh, some voltage some electrical signal will uh, will be generated so by analyzing the electrical signal you can again read the variation in that parameter so if i if we can talk about an example i can say like a most basic type of temperature sensors like lm35 is an example lm35 is a very basic um, temperature sensor and it is basically it, uh, it uses the uh, the property of semi can semiconductors the property of semiconductors that it is susceptible to external temperatures so any semiconductor device is susceptible to external its characteristics will change based on the external temperature uh, so this is actually undesirable in case of uh, most of the electronics devices it is uh, to shield this so many different type of uh, things are done to shield this type of changes in in normal electronics but in case of a temperature sensor this should be this is very essential this characteristics of a semiconductor so that lm35 uses a very thing so if you see in the seen lm35 uh, sensor then the then you can see that uh, it 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 uh, it looks exactly like a uh, transistor so it basically it is a transistor that is uh, you can connect the base is output pin 
and you can connect uh, uh, you know supply and uh, ground to uh, you know collector and emitter then you can use that as a temperature sensor it is actually designed for that particular purpose it is not cannot be used in a as a normal uh, you know uh, a normal transistor <coughs> you can only use it in temperature measurements so it uses the same principle so that uh, the changes of uh, change in uh, characteristics of semiconductors by introducing temperature so it uh, that is one ex example of one mechanism so, so this is only uh, for for the specific sensor lm35 sensor so if you take any other sensor it uses different type of uh, different type of uh, mechanisms is if we talk about another uh, sensor mem sensors so mem sensors are very important uh, Im important these days because of uh, like when it comes to automation to have like if you have a any kind of it could be a mobile device a, a rover or a robot or some kind or a standing robot humanoid robot whatever it is or it could be a manipulator that it, it, it is moving in different directions picking different things so it, or it can be like a medical process like a physiotherapy in case of physiotherapy so there are like devices uh, physiotherapy devices that use these days uh, to uh, in people like to check how their orientation and things and if you take a simple example you have in, in your phone itself you have mems devices so mems devices are like accelerometer is used in your phone to see gyroscope and accelerometer is used in your phone to see how what is the level of your phone so if you have a if you are playing a game in in which you are tilting your phone and in the game you can see the uh, whatever you're playing it it will go to left or right based on the your tilt movement it will do the same so if if you use your phone as a in case of google cardboard if you use your phone as a uh, as the you know virtual reality screen then uh, vr screen in 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 that case also it uses the different type of sensors like a uh, gyroscope and accelerometer sensor so all these sensors gyroscope accelerometer they all come comes under general uh, definition of mems so then mems is used in so many different areas and uh, so if we explain the working of accelerometer one of the simplest uh, mem sensors accelerometer sensor so acc accelerometer sensor measures the acceleration in a particular direction so it is x y uh, or positive x direction negative x direction or positive y direction or negative y direction or left right or a front back acceleration in a particular direction so uh, what is the use of measuring the acceleration in that direction we can easily see in which way the thing is moving or which way the uh, thing is rotating uh, or, uh, or the thing is uh, actually the whether it is a robot or your phone or whatever it is it is in a horizontal position or it is tip down it is in a vertical position you can easily measure it using this accelerometer sensor so accelerometer sensor uses the uh, basic uh, capacitor same principle as it uses the same principle like a capacitor so we know about capacitors they have a they have two electrodes and then in between there is an insulator so as we <coughs> increase and decrease the uh, increase and decrease the the width of, width between the electrodes the or the size of the uh, insulator in between the voltage will change right if you studied about capacitors you you know in school if you studied about capacitor you studied already you know already that it will move by the by changing the width between the electrodes you can it will change you can vary the uh, voltage output capacitance of the of the capacitor so that it uses the accelerometer uses the same kind of uh, principle so it is actually a spring system inside the uh, sensor it is a spring system one electrode is fixed to the sensor fi uh, fixed to the overall frame of the sensor and the second sen second electrode is suspended through a spring system so whenever the, whenever we move the sensor in a particular direction the in the the electrode will, electrodes will get closer or they'll get uh, they'll uh, they'll go apart so by uh, so with that increase and decreasing uh, you know increase and, uh, increasing and decreasing width between the electrodes the voltage output will change so based on the voltage output we can see 
how the voltage output based on how the voltage output is whether it is increasing or decreasing we can see which way the sensor is rotating so that is one way in which you can measure the acceleration axis so there is a simple mechanism if you think it is a just uses the same principle as a capacitor and uses that principle to measure the axis so it is a simple mechanism but when it comes to a real application it uh, is very effective this type of devices can be used in so many so it makes the whole system more much more uh, in, intelligent so that is these are like the in those are like two these are like two examples two examples of uh, two different sensors one is temperature sensor which uses a semiconductor material property uh, and the second one is uh, accelerometer sensor which uses a capacitor principle of capacitor to uh, <coughs> measure the acceleration so so similar to that uh, so same like this every sensor has some kind of mechanism that it uses to convert the actual parameter to uh, electrical signal so then different type of sensors examples of sensors like a uh, water level sensor ldr sensor electricity sensor like uh, current sensor this is a current sensor this is also another type of current sensor and ldr is for light detection then water level sensor so this water level sensor uh, you can see this type of sensors in 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 uh, petrol pumps in petrol pumps they have uh, the petrol pump they use the same kind of uh, thing too so it is if you, if they if they give a particular limit it will only pump up to that limit to, so to measure the how much measure how much uh, liters of uh, or milliliters of petrol is being poured or uh, you know fuel is being poured they use the same the same exact sensor what uh, this is not a level sensor this is a uh, water flow sensor one not water just fluid liquid flow sensor any kind of liquid we can measure the flow rate of any kind of liquids so that uh, it uses a rotor rotation mechanism so there is like a rotor inside this so when 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 liquid flow flows through the sensor it will start rotating and you know that uh, this is the it has a constant uh, volume this volume here this volume here is a constant and the based on the rotation we can see how much fuel, you know fuel have uh, is inside the uh, this box here and how much has left that box so based on that you can easily measure how much fuel is being poured you can measure the level of fuel being poured and then ldr is light dependent resistor that uh, it uses uh it uh, the it is a resistor basically it is a you know resistor and it's susceptible to light so if uh, light increases the the voltage uh, the current flowing through this will decrease the resistor will you know decrease then analog sound sensor current sensor so then based on the output you can classify sensors into two different types discrete and proportional digital output digital output and analog output so analog sensors proper discrete is digital sensors and proportional is analog sensors so this uh, the in this case current sensor ldr sensor sound sensor this current sensor all 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 these devices all these sensors are analog sensors because they measure current or they measure sound so these are all uh, or light intensity these are all continuous analog parameters so you cannot like uh, you cannot say this is the light intensity level it is high, either high or low that is a very vague uh, representation of light intensity light intensity throughout the day it will change through on, on if it is uh, like one o'clock the intensity very, will be very high and throughout the day it will uh, decrease and increase so there is a continuous change and it the output signal is always an analog signal so th that's why this sensor is an analog sensor current is also the same current is an analog signal and uh, sound is also the same it's an analog signal then water level water level sensor actually <coughs> uh, water not water level, water flow sensor it is a digital sensor because i told you that it uses a rotor mechanism and uh, with the by counting the rotor how many counts it has uh, it has gone through that how, by counting the number of rotations you can see how much fuel has been how much uh, you know liquid has been poured has went through the sensor so but still it uses the tick counter it is counting the ticks number of rotations so e with each rotation there is a single tick 
so it is counting the ticks so how many how many ticks in one second so counting tick means it is either high or uh, it uh, either zero or one if it uh, if the if one revolution completed then it will the one pin will go one pin will go high so again it will go high so it is uh, only high or low so this sensor is a digital sensor because it can only it is only can only measure ones and zeros and discrete uh, can be classified in different two different ways then the other things is uh, controllers different kind of microcontrollers and socs and uh, sbcs that are used in these days like these are like two examples here arduino uh, arduino uno board one of the most popular arduino boards and then raspberry pi these both are not uh, mostly used in like uh, there are like arduino boards are used in industrial devices purposes uh, but not maybe not arduino uno it's not that uh, you know viable when it comes to uh, you know reliable systems and also raspberry pi same it is not mostly used in any kind of it is mostly used in educational research purposes if you want to make it uh, even in industrial cases people make prototypes using arduino boards because they don't want to uh, spend the whole uh, you know whole lot of time uh, to make a simple prototype to see if it is it, uh, to uh, to submit the proof of concept they can use that they can use an arduino board and they can easily program the arduino board using uh, arduino ide is very simple and takes much less time and you can also uh, you know demonstrate that uh, the system will work and then you can to when you develop a product based on that prototype you can change the uh, you know platform to some other more in uh, you know <coughs> uh, more reliable type of hardware like arm or pick or uh, avr or different type of uh, you know tms or msp boards different type of or you can use different type of you know vlsi systems you know fpga systems then cloud and uh, cloud computing so we already discussed uh, what is the relevance of cloud another example that i've just uh, i've explained the river water analysis what is the use of cloud in that then big data and uh, characteristics of big, big data then uh, internet of things applications present these so this is like a graphical representation of requirements searching and usage in different areas like smart home smart city the requirement is very high but the usage is very low searching and usage is very low industrial iot the searching is very high requirement is uh, also a, you know medium level of requirement and usage is so in most cases usage is very low so then different type of uh, examples like a safety and security system in a vehicle case uh, sleep detection like person recognition if you through face recognition uh, and sleep detection through uh, analyzing your eyelids uh, by by seeing your, your eyelids you can uh, like uh, blinking by blink detection you can see if a person is sleepy or not and sound alarms if the person is sleeping uh, then extra driver different type of extra blind spot assistance like obstacle detection and then stop sign detection so these are like some examples some of the examples of uh, different things that we can do in a vehicle through internet of things connected cars uh, so connected cars can be used for different to uh, avoiding different type of uh, uh, difficult scenarios in case of a public driving system and uh, automated traffic system here the through uh, cameras through deep learning you, you can see how many cars are there you can count the number of cars and you can cars and you can uh, see predict the uh, traffic density in one direction based on that you can regulate the timing green light timing of different lanes the like traffic management system then car parking system so these are like some of the examples here uh, in when it comes to internet of things so that's it uh, we have to wind up the session here uh, thank thanks for listening so this is like a small in introduction to internet of things so if you want to further study about this uh, about internet of things or embedded systems or machine learning any of these uh, like new platforms technologies you can 
you can easily use the uh, you can use you can use different type of learning platforms and you can use our learning platform panda learning uh, we conduct different type of uh, uh, programs uh, on internet of things and how to like we can and the, some master class programs will integrate internet of things with the deep learning and other things to make different type of application so these days it is not you know you just you don't just use a single technology you use multiple technologies and combine these because it is easy to develop there are like so many open source platforms are there uh, to develop different applications so you can <clears throat> easily you can combine by yourself on your on your own you don't uh, you don't need any help from anyone else you can by learning this initially learn from one person and then you can easily use that knowledge to develop your own applications so i hope the session was helpful and uh, and i and best wishes for all of you thank you